QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Sales Tax Setup. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Practice File homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the View dropdown and the open windows list. We're going to be talking about the sales tax here. Remember what the sales tax is. It's going to be a tax or it's supposed to be a tax on the customers. The customers being taxed for the purchases that is happening. But of course, we, the business owners, are, are given the burden of applying the tax, collecting the tax, and then paying it to the state or the government that is forcing us to collect the tax and pay it to them. So that means that in the U.S. note that the sales tax is going to be something that typically will not be on the federal level. It will be on the state and local level. Therefore, the sales tax could change on a state and local level. So you want to make sure that you're picking up the proper sales tax and, and being in compliance with it, whatever law you are dealing with. The sales tax can be more complicated if you're making sales in multiple states uh, within the U.S. And, and in other in other areas around the world. Now, if you're in uh, another country, you might have a, a national sales tax or or a usage a usage uh, tax, which is the same concept. That's what we're doing here. The person that's purchasing is going to be paying the tax, and that's going to be the idea. Okay, so we have to set up the sales tax. The, the questions we need to be dealing with then is uh, you know who's going to be eligible for the sales tax. And then um, which products and services are going to be required to be collecting sales tax on? And then how are we going to be collecting and paying that sales tax uh, to, to, uh, that we set up? So there's kind of three components to get the setup right in uh, QuickBooks. One is going gonna, is gonna to be in the settings. We took a look at, at that in the past. We'll go over it again here. And then we have to set up the items that will be needed in order to be applying them as we create the invoices and the sales receipts, which are going to be the documents that we will use in order to create or, or record the sales tax, because those are the ones we use to make the sales. And then we also need to think about customers to some degree to think about whether or not we have customers that are not subject to the sales tax. This is kind of more of a minimal type of thing for most companies because, you know, the customers are going to be required to pay sales tax if the item, the inventory item, or service item, inventory item typically is requiring sales tax. But you might have some situations where the customer does not, you know, need to pay sales tax, even though uh, another customer would, you know, you have some kind of situation where the, the customer is going to be exempt from sales tax. Okay, so let's start off with the edit drop down. We're going to go down to the preferences. We looked at this last time, the sales tax, or we've looked at it when we went through the preferences, the sales tax is down here on the left hand side, we had the company preferences. And we said we wanted to turn on sales tax. So sales tax has now been turned on. We're going to add the sales tax item. We're going to be dealing with a California in our practice problem. So I'm just going to name it California sales tax. And we added this item. You can add another item here. We're going to go to the items section to add more sales tax items. Then we have the codes, the taxable code. When it says tax, that means that it's going to be something that will be uh, taxable. Uh, so when you see tax on the sales receipt or invoice, that's taxable. Now, you could call it sales tax. You might think that's confusing. But if it's on the invoice, then it's got to be sales tax. That's the tax we're talking about. Non means it's non-taxable. It's not going to be a taxable item. And remember, when you're thinking about the logistics of sales tax, uh, when are you going to pay taxes? When are you going to collect them? then you got to think about what the locality is requiring of you. And again, in the U.S., it'll differ from state to state, from locality to locality. And those localities may differ based on how much you are receiving in sales. For example, if your sales tax is relatively low, they may say, hey, just collect the sales tax for the entire year and then pay it to us annually. And that would be easy because you don't have to deal with it the whole, you know, the whole year and then pay them as you go. Or they might say, hey, we would like it quarterly. Your sales are such that we would like it quarterly. That would mean, for example, you'd be collecting the sales tax for the first three months of the year. And then you'd have to figure your sales tax and pay the government sometime, most likely, in the fourth month of the year, the, the, quarter, the month after the first quarter, and so on. If you do it monthly, as we will do in our example problem then uh, you would have to then you would think uh, record the sales record the sales tax collect the sales tax for the month for example the month of january and then you would pay it every following month possibly right so in february you would be paying the sales tax that you had collected from customers in the month of january 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the monthly item here just as an example problem. Again, that'll change from region to region and by the amount of your sales. And then the question over here is, is does the, the state or the locality require you to record sales tax when you enter the invoice, which is not necessarily when you get the money, but when you typically earn the revenue on an accrual basis. In other words, when you make an invoice, you didn't get paid yet, but you did do the work and therefore earned the revenue uh, but you're going to get the cash in the future. So that's kind of like the default because that's usually when we record revenue. Or should you be down here and not record the, the sales uh, receipt, not record this information, when do you owe the sales tax as being owed until you actually get paid on the invoice? Meaning when you enter a sales receipt, you would you would be recording it because you'd be on a cash basis. But when you enter an invoice, then do you get to wait until until you actually get paid before you have to actually pay the money that would be owed to to the government so the default will typically be here which would be on the accrual type of basis so i'm going to say okay on here and then the next thing we want to take a look at is the lists drop down the lists drop down if i hit the lists drop down we have the payroll i'm sorry the sales tax code list sales tax code list and here are our two items that say tax and non-tax. These are the items that are going to show up on the sales receipt and the invoice to indicate whether tax will be there or not. If you want to change these and call it sales tax or something like that to be more specific, then you could you can edit these by going to edit. And, and you know, you could change the name. Uh, it says only three characters here, so you can, it's not too many characters, you can edit them or you can add another another code if you if you would like a different code or something like that but those are the standard two codes closing this back out the other list that we want to go to lists drop down is going to be our items list so i'm going to open up the items list now this is where we had our inventory items and our service items but quickbooks also puts the sales tax items in this category as well so this is another kind of in, in quickbooks terminology not necessarily accounting terminology under items will have the sales tax item and the items are found under quickbooks terminology quotes lists so lists items and now we're going to go to the items drop down or rise up new item going to set up a new item it's not going to be a service or inventory item it's going to be a sales tax item and so i'm going to set sales tax item we won't we won't get into groups we're going to keep it basic sales tax so that we only have one you know one sales tax you could set up different sales tax if you're subject to different sales tax for different sales we're just going to do the, the one sales tax in as if we're doing business in one state here subject to one uh, sales tax regulation so the sales tax name i'm going to say california uh, state sales tax and i'm going to say that uh, the description sales tax and i'll say california just to Make it a little bit more specific. That's the only one we'll use though. And then 5%, I'm gonna say it's 5%. And then the agency, this is basically gonna be a vendor. We set this up in a prior presentation. I'm gonna call it California Department of Tax and Fees Admin. If you haven't set that up, you can add one here. Obviously this is a vendor. This is who you pay the money to. So when you write the check or do the electronic tra transfer, whoever the government is that's forcing you to collect sales tax from the customer and then pay them that sales tax that you collected, that's who's going to go here and you'll pay them. They'll be set up basically as, in essence, a vendor. So that's going to be the basic setup of it. I'm going to say OK. And then there we have it. Now we have our sales tax that's going to be set up here. Now the other, so that's that's going to be the item that we need to set up. Then we need to consider all the items that are going to be shown on the invoice or sales receipt, the things we do, the services and the uh, inventory items need to be marked as either having been taxable or non-taxable. So I'm going to say, all right, like here's an inventory item. If I double click on the inventory item, you can see this little indication means it's taxable. So all of our in inventory items will be taxable and the non-inventory items will not. Closing this back out, for example, if I select the hourly service, a service item, we have non-taxable, non-taxable. So in the in the U.S., that's typically the case. The inventory items may be taxable. Service items generally will not be taxable. So I'm going to close that out. That's the essence of what you need. That'll basically be mostly it because the default setting that we put in place, which is the default setting when you turn on sales tax, is that all customers are going to be 
uh, taxable subject to what they are purchasing. Meaning, if they purchase something that is taxable, like an inventory item, they will be subject to tax. And if they purchase something that is not taxable, such as a service item or get a service, then they're, they're not going to be subject to tax based on what they bought. But you could have situations where you have particular, like you're, you're selling, you're reselling or something like that, or you have a nonprofit organization or something that for whatever reason is not subject to sales tax. And for that, you'd have to go into the customer specifically and say, this customer is not uh, in the default as we typically put in place, but is exempt from the sales tax. So you could go to the customer drop down here, customer center. <clears throat> now we don't have any customers set up, so you'd have to go into the customer here and then and then tell tell the tell the the system that that cut that particular customer is not subject to sales tax again that's probably more of an unusual type of situation but you want to be aware of it if you if you fall into that uh, situation if you have customers that you don't need to charge sales tax to uh don't charge them sales tax right so i'm going to close this back out and uh, close this back out let's go then to the home page and let's just test this out. I'm not going to record the invoice, but let's just take a look at an invoice. I'm going to open up an invoice now. And uh, if if we had a cus, I think we're going to have to set up a customer just for a test. So if I say test customer, test customer, and uh, test is not a customer job, I'm going to quickly set it up. This is just going to be a test customer. It says the name you selected is associated with an inactive tax item. So what I want to do is I'm going to make it active. I'm going to make it active and I'm going to say, yeah, that tax item I want. And so then we see the tax that's going to be applied down here, down below. If I then go to the item and I say, I want to add, if I add like a non-taxable item, a service item here, you can see the tax is not applied because it's a non-taxable item. If I were then to add an item that is taxable, such as a guitar that we're going to sell, then you can see the tax is now being applied at, uh, at that 5% down here. So that's gonna that's what's gonna be applicable there. If I close this back out, I just want to see close this back out, and I'm not gonna record it. No, let's go to the lists drop down again. Let's go to the items list here, and notice I I now have two items because I set up the sales tax item when I um when I went to the edit tab, and then we added a new one here, and the first one was inactive. So I have two items. Now, if, if that happens to you and you want to basically remove one of the items that you're not using, I think this is the one that I'm, I'm not using. So I'm going to double click on this item. Uh, you could delete it, but I'm just going to say make it inactive. So I'm going to make it inactive, make that item inactive, and then I'm going to say OK. And so now I've got the one sales item. The other one is inactive. Now, the reason I didn't pick that up before is because because this is only showing the active items. If I was to click this button, then you can see that inactive item there uh, on the sales tax. I'm going to close this back out. Let's just take a look at the customers now that we have one. If I go to the customers drop down, customer center. Uh, now we have this one test customer that we have set up going into the test customer. Uh, we can then see our, our information for the customer. And if this customer happened to be tax exempt, if I go to sales tax over here, then we, we could say over here in the tax code, we can say that they're, they're non-taxable. They're going to be tax exempt. Again, that's not typically the case. Most of the time, the customer will be defaulted as taxable, and then they will be subject to tax based on what they purchase, either a service, which will typically be non-taxable, and a, or a good inventory, which may be then taxable. But if they are like a nonprofit or have some other kind of thing going on, then you might have the particular customer that's not subject to tax even though they're purchasing something that would otherwise be a taxable item.